Hello, welcome to RT Today, where we bring you Middletown High School's announcements for the week ahead, a wrap-up of what happened in the news last week, and more. I'm Mallory Beck. This week's show is brought to you by... Middletown Sportsland Incorporated, the place to find all your sports needs. Located on 108 West Main Street in downtown Middletown. Let's go to Kaylin Zanlow with a look back at This Week in History. In This Week in History, on January 12, 2010, a massive magnitude 7.0 earthquake struck Haiti, with its epicenter only 16 miles west of Port-au-Prince, Haiti's capital. Haiti is one of the poorest countries in the world, and building codes and standards do not take into account earthquakes. The death toll was estimated to be around 100,000 and 150,000. Because of severe damage to the country's infrastructure, humanitarian aid, including rescue medical teams, engineers, and support personnel from around the world were slow in being deployed. The scale of damage included 250,000 homes and 30,000 commercial buildings. The Haiti earthquake is the fourth deadliest earthquake on record. That's your look at This Week in History. Now let's hear about this week's birthdays from Rayana Kincaid. Happy birthday last week to Ryan King, Drew Kalega, Mia Montanoia, Chloe Gilbert, Cassidy Johnson, Grace Redhead, Trey Rice, Colin West, Blake Folden, Micah Rue Plankenhorn, Braden Smith, Bailey Broadbent, Caitlin George, Sabrina Miller, Abigail Smetzer, Chloe Davis, Isabel Ewine, Catherine Lucas, Buckley Thompson, and Will Shetty. Happy birthday this week to Mackenzie Alcorn, Patrick Flynn, Ethan Fontenot, Stephen Hartman, Philip Kyrolov, Baron Rob, Nina Yurkovatsky, Taylor Afferton, Josh Erb, Lauren Lipinski, Diana Dunkel, Leslie Rodriguez, Jacob Wilds, Haley Derwin, Brian Hoffman, Connor Lehman, Morgan Weddle, Layla Mellaby, and Jonathan Rupert. Let's go to Jack Schmiel with this week's announcements. Due to worsening trends in health metrics, Frederick County Public Schools last week announced a delay to its plan to implement a hybrid learning model. In its updated plan, students will be returning as part of an in-person hybrid model on Tuesday, February 16th. FCPS Superintendent Dr. Terry Alvin says, quote, I feel confident about our hybrid model and we are looking forward to welcoming students back into our school buildings. We just need the right health metrics in place to make this happen." Unquote. Each year, Frederick County Public Schools celebrates the leadership qualities of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. by hosting a winter celebration. A representative from each school is chosen to represent the student body and must possess and demonstrate leadership characteristics both in and out of the classroom. This year, Middletown High School is pleased to announce senior Meadow Webster as our Rev. Dr. Martin Luther King Award recipient. She is a leader who excels in academics and the arts, and additionally, she volunteers in the community. We are extremely proud of Meadow, and we know that she will represent Middletown High School well as the recipient of this award. This year's annual Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. celebration is scheduled as a virtual event that will be airing on FCPS Cable 18 and YouTube channel on Thursday, January 7th. Please join us in congratulating Meadow as she is very much deserving of this honor. All students, Registration for next year has started. You will complete the registration form on Naviance. For help with doing this, look on your Schoology Counseling Center course. There is also information on the MHS website. If you need help from your counselor, you can either drop into your counselor's Google Meet next week during Night's Quest, or you can make an appointment with him or her. See Schoology for help with how to do this. Students who have signed up for Student Service Learning, SSL, for spring semester need to complete the work-based learning application. The link was emailed to you last week. If you have any questions, please contact Mrs. Gibson or Mrs. Zimmer. Students who have signed up for internship in spring semester need to complete the work-based learning application and also secure a placement for their internship. The link was emailed to you last week. If you have any questions, please contact Mrs. Gibson. Over winter break, the MHS Drama Department held virtual showings of their own twist to a classic play. RT reporter Gabby Pieclo and some of the actors give us a little glimpse into the works. The MHS Drama Department produced a virtual performance of the show Clue. Some of the actors give us insight on what Clue is. Clue is 
a comedic mystery. It's it's very fun. It's very fast paced. A group of people who get invited to a dinner party, and once they get there, they realize that the host of the meal is not quite honest up front about what's going on. They're all trapped in a house. Eventually, it all gets revealed in that they're all connected to each other in some sort of way. We have this old school murder mystery, but there's something different about this performance. It's very different than a normal play that we that would be produced at Middletown High School. So we're obviously doing the show through a Google Meet. But we would have a solid white background with a light in front of us. And we would just film like we were on a Zoom or Google Meet. So it would be from like chest up. So you really just heard the line, but it was hard to play off of each other. And so that was a lot different, but I think everyone did a really good job at overcoming that. It's edited by someone who used to go here. And that editor is going to uh, edit the video that we did of ourselves into a whole sort of show. The performance dates were December 25th, 26th, and 27th. You can learn more about this unique show in the extended feature video on mhsroundtable.com or on the Student News Source app. Thanks, Jack. Now let's find out what's been happening in the rest of the world. Last Wednesday, a joint session of Congress headed by Vice President Mike Pence began affirmation of electoral votes from all 50 states in Washington, D.C. from the 2020 presidential election. What is normally a rather straightforward process was overshadowed by calls from President Trump to Vice President Pence to disrupt the process and prevent the electoral count from occurring. Vice President Pence broke ranks with Trump, indicating he did not have the constitutional authority to do what President Trump was asking of him. Some Senate and Congressional Republicans, headed by Texas Senator Ted Cruz, objected to their certified election results and called for an electoral commission to conduct an emergency audit to examine voter fraud allegations in Arizona, Georgia, and Pennsylvania. While Congress debated the objections, the Save America mark led by President Trump was occurring many blocks away near the Washington Monument. During his speech, President Trump asked the followers to go to the Capitol building. Many of the protesters that arrived at the Capitol became violent, broke through the police lines and forced their way into the U.S. Capitol building and ultimately into the House and Senate floors. When it became evident that the congressional members were no longer safe, the joint session was abruptly halted and members of the Congress were evacuated to other congressional office buildings, some by way of tunnel. During the attack, five people, including one Capitol Police officer, died. Once police were able to restore order to a Capitol building, Congress returned and late into the night finished affirmation of the election results, confirming Joe Biden as the president-elect Thursday morning. In the aftermath, President Trump has come under intense criticism for his connection to the situation, with calls for impeachment led by Democrats gathering momentum. Last Tuesday, Senate runoff elections in Georgia were held to determine the balance of power in the Senate. After all votes were tallied, Democrat challengers Raphael Warnock and John Ossoff beat Republican incumbents Kelly Loeffler and David Perdue, respectively. These two wins have shifted the balance of power in the Senate to a 50-50 split. If there's a tie, it is then broken by the vice president. Warnock can't celebrate for long, however, since his seat requires re-election in the 2022 midterms. The vaccine distribution for Maryland is going to be a four-phase process. Phase 1A will see the vaccine being rolled out to all licensed, registered, or certified health care providers, as well as law enforcement officers, correctional officers, and judiciary staff. Phase 1B of the plan will see everyone over 75, plus all special needs group homes and high-risk inmates, as well as teachers, child care, and educational staff. Phase 1C includes all Marylanders aged 65 to 74, as well as essential workers in grocery stores, public transit, agricultural production, and manufacturing. Phase 2 will go to Marylanders aged 16 to 64, who are at increased risk of COVID-19, as well as essential workers in these sectors. Up next, Gabby Piaclo tells us what's been happening in the world of arts, entertainment, and celebrity. Dr. Dre was recently admitted to Cedars-Sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles due to a brain aneurysm. 
Dre recently said that he has been feeling better and that he's expected to go home soon. Dre also thanked his family, friends, and fans for their love and support, as well as shouted out to the medical professionals at Cedars for the care they have provided for him. Kanye West and Kim Kardashian West are reportedly filing for a divorce after multiple sources have told Page Six magazine that, quote, divorce is imminent, unquote, after Kardashian hires divorce attorney Laura Wasser. Kardashian has been seen not wearing her wedding ring and West remained on his Wyoming ranch over the holidays rather than with the Kardashian family. The 2021 Grammy Awards have been postponed due to COVID-19 related concerns. The awards show was set to take place on January 31st, but has been postponed until Sunday, March 14th. This decision was made after the Actors Union put a halt to production due to rising severity of COVID-19 cases in California. The producer of the show in a statement thanked artists, staff, and vendors for their understanding and patience. Let's go to sports where Ethan Mulliken catches us up on what's happening on and off the field. Fifteen finalists for the Pro Football Hall of Fame were announced on January 5th. Peyton Manning, Calvin Johnson, Charles Woodson, and Jared Allen are all in their first year of eligibility for the Hall of Fame. The official announcement of who has made it into the class of 2021 will be revealed on Saturday, February 6th. The NCAA Division I March Madness Basketball Tournament will hold all games in Indianapolis this year due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The March Madness Tournament was canceled in 2020 due to the initial outbreak of COVID-19. Alabama star wide receiver Devontae Smith won the Heisman Trophy. He is the first wideout to win the award since Desmond Howard won in 1991. Smith had 1,641 yards receiving and 20 touchdowns during his Heisman campaign. Thanks, Ethan. Finally, Morgan Bandry shares with us some words of wisdom. How many bad situations can you think of right now that might completely go away, disappear, if everyone involved would show simple kindness towards each other? Think about bullying and mean-spirited teasing. You cannot be a bully with a kind heart, and it's impossible to be simultaneously mean-spirited and kind. With kindness, we can build each other up rather than tear each other down. Now, listen to these words from writer Henry James. Three things in human life are important. The first is to be kind. The second is to be kind. And the third is to be kind. Take some time to consider how each of us can bring a little more kindness into our world. So ask yourself this, who in the world, whether in my community or across the globe, needs a little kindness? Make it a great day or not, the choice is yours.